Stars. Hey, what's up? Wes here. Thanks a lot for tuning in. So, I'm starting a new series called I Haven't Played This Game in Years, which is where I revisit games that I haven't played in 10 years or longer and give them a second chance. So, I'll give my initial impression of the game from years ago, I'll replay the game and see what my thoughts are this time around. So, the first two games that I'm actually going to cover for this series are Resident Evil's 2 and 3. Now, I haven't played either of these games in probably about 15 years or so. Now, you may be wondering, why am I only covering Resident Evil's 2 and 3? Why not 1? Well, I actually covered Resident Evil 1 last October for its 20th anniversary, and basically I just run through the game and summarize it, do a quick review of it, see how it holds up 20 years later. Um, you ought to check it out. I'll actually throw down an annotation at the end of the video and also drop a link in the description below. So take a look, check it out. Now in preparation for this video, I actually ran a Twitter poll to see which of the three Resident Evil games people like the most. And surprise, surprise, Resident Evil 2 got more than half of the votes as their favorite, with Nemesis being last. Now for me, I remember Nemesis being my favorite of the three, with Resident Evil 1 coming in second, and then Resident Evil 2 coming in a distant third. It wasn't even close to the other two. But hey, I haven't played either of these in about 15 years, so it's time to revisit them. Let's see what I think of them today. Resident Evil 2 takes place two months after the horrific events that had transpired in the Spencer Mansion, located in the Arklay Mountains just beyond the outskirts of Raccoon City. We are introduced for the first time to Resident Evil stalwarts Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield. You're a cop, right? Yeah, first day on the job. We learn later on throughout the series that if Leon didn't have bad luck, he wouldn't have any luck at all. Claire is searching for her brother Chris, who had gone missing shortly after surviving the terrifying ordeal that had taken place within Spencer Mansion. The small town of Raccoon City is suddenly overrun by flesh-eating zombies, and the short-lived team of Leon and Claire is quickly separated, but not before a hasty plan of meeting up and seeking sanctuary in the Raccoon City Police Department headquarters is agreed upon. Resident Evil 2 employs a unique system called the Zapping System in which each character's specific campaign can be played, providing each with their own unique storyline and obstacles, which in turn affects the outcome of each respective protagonist's narrative and vice versa. Now I have a confession to make. The last time I played Resident Evil 2, I had only completed Leon's campaign and stopped shortly after beginning Claire's, concluding that the differences were just far too similar based on the beginning of her run. Had I exhibited a little bit more patience, I would have discovered that that's not the case. But hey, I was a stupid teenager and I just knew everything, right? The two campaigns start out in a similar fashion, but soon branch out into their own unique storylines tying in together. Now I chose Leon to begin the game and then Claire for my second playthrough, enabling unlimited ammo for hers, cause let's face it, it's just a fucking blast. The gameplay basically continues right from where the first one left off. The play mechanics are the same, utilizing tank controls and employing the same limited item storage method that its predecessor had. Returning are the limited saves, the storage boxes, and healing herbs, which were the standard archetype of the original. Once again, zombies infest the RPD in a structure similar to that of Spencer Mansion with some new baddies to encounter, such as the liquor. Keys are adorned with the suits of playing cards which unlock mysteries hidden behind the many doors of the RPD HQ, and typical Resident Evil style puzzles must be solved in order to uncover the numerous secrets within the game. It's more of the same, really, which I think is one of the reasons why I wasn't exactly impressed with this one many years ago. Despite the familiarity of Resident Evil 2, improvements were made over its predecessor. For example, the lack of ammo and healing items which made the American version of Resident Evil such a pain in the ass is addressed here. No longer do you have to avoid and dance around half of the undead baddies within the police station to conserve ammo. There's plenty available to encourage a happy trigger finger. 
A supple amount of healing items are also scattered throughout, and an abundance of ink ribbons are easily accessible to save your game more often. And it feels as if Leon and Claire can endure much more damage than Chris or Jill ever could. And of course, some things never change. Sherry's wandering around alone in the sewers. You have to help me find her. That's impossible. I told her to go to the police station. The Oscar goes to... This time, Resident Evil 2 introduces several secondary characters to instill a more engrossing tale versus the original. The strange, psychotic police chief Irons is a prime example. Wait, is that Mike Hagar? Yeah. And an arrogant news reporter, Ben, who has himself locked inside of a jail cell for protection. Ada Wong also makes her first appearance in the series once Leon escapes from the police station and teams up with him in typical Ada Wong fashion. On the same token, a small frightened girl named Sherry befriends Claire, ignoring all of the don't talk to strangers criterion decreed since preschool. Both Ada and Sherry take on playable roles, albeit minor ones, to change up the gameplay. This is something that we've grown accustomed to in later editions of the franchise. Similar story twists take similar turns as both Ben and Chief Irons forcefully ingest parasites, which later burst open from their shells. Bloody good show! And another similarity with the original Resident Evil is that the game soon moves underground, this time to the sewers, again like Resident Evil's Dark Caverns, inhabited by enormous spiders. And here's where I also noticed that the bosses were a bit lacking in comparison to its predecessor. In the original, you have the giant snake yawn to tangle with, not to mention the giant plant monster. I feel that Resident Evil 2 lacks some real mean bosses, but then again, the giant gator is a blast to kill. Come to think of it, both games are a bit lacking in this area. And it isn't long before the story takes a turn to, you guessed it, a laboratory, where ammo discs need to be collected and a hulking ugly mutated beast has to be disposed of before concluding with a climactic escape. Yeah, Resident Evil 2 shares many similarities with its previous installment, which for me felt that it was kinda copying and ripping off its own big brother. It just seems a bit too similar to the first one. While the graphics, increase in ammunition, healing items, and ink ribbons are a vast improvement, the narrative seems a little all too familiar. But don't get me wrong, now that I've experienced both campaigns, I definitely get it. I now understand why Resident Evil 2 was revered by many as the best of the series for the Sony PlayStation. This is Chopper Delta, preparing to drop off at area E95070. So Capcom didn't waste any time releasing its next Resident Evil. Unveiled only one year after its predecessor, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis was originally intended to be a spin-off in the series, but Capcom decided to bump up its release and change it to the third installment of the franchise to give PlayStation players another numbered edition, rather than have fans wait for the next chapter on the then soon to be released PlayStation 2. Nemesis used the same engine as the previous two installments, which included, of course, mandatory improvements. This time around, the game is even more action-oriented, providing the player with a buttload of weapons and ammo from the onset, and unlimited ink ribbons. This is not the case on the game's hard setting, but with the only other choice being easy, it's easy to go into the game guns blazing. Jill Valentine once again reprises her role as the main protagonist here, apparently on the way back from the club. Damn, baby! Jill's got it going on! Eh, not bad but this is the Jill I've always preferred. You know what? Let's just put her down here. Raccoon City is in utter chaos. Overrun by zombies, Jill finds herself smack dab in the middle of the melee, the small town's last saving grace in the form of an undead Van Helsing-like savior destined to commit mass zombicide. Wait, is that even a thing? Zombies are already dead. Anyway, Jill finds herself in the ruined streets surrounded by hordes of flesh eaters, and it's immediately clear that simply running away and avoiding zombies isn't going to work this time. Taking advantage of the multitude of ammo at Jill's disposal, the action-oriented Resident Evil 3 focuses more on enemy eradication than the previous two installments, and it's definitely a welcome change. While I no doubt love the careful approach of Resident Evil's 1 and 2 in regards to ammo conservation, 
it's just way too much fun to blast anything and everything that moves. I think this is probably the main factor as to why I preferred this edition over its predecessors. Well that, and the fact that you're able to roam through the city. Resident Evil 3 doesn't have you hold up in a building this time, you actually have to explore the streets and buildings of Raccoon City. The detail given to the pre-rendered streets and alleyways are impressive for the time, and the dead city environment that you find yourself immersed in gives it a hell of a chilling feeling when all alone sans zombies. There's an awesome haunted house every year in the Denver area called City of the Dead, which in my opinion is the best in town, and the dead streets through it remind me so much of Resident Evil 3 that I would often put myself in the shoes of a Stars member waiting to outrun a gaggle of reanimated corpses. But nothing in the game instills the fear and dread that envelops you once the Nemesis is introduced. Showing up at random times, the Nemesis is a hulking giant of a monster, similar to the Tyrant from the first game, with the strength of a coked up moose. Stars. This monosyllabic mutant rushes at you with such ferocity that as a youngster, I usually had to pause the game to gather my bearings before choosing my next course of action, which is usually RUN and or Get the fuck out of here! But damn, that bastard can run too. And boy, is he a fast son of a bitch. The dread and anxiety of the Nemesis is also one of the big attractions for me in this game. Video games really don't scare me whatsoever, but honestly, not knowing when that bastard will show up next scared the bejesus out of me like nothing else had ever done in a game. He can fire a rocket launcher at you for fuck's sake. You come across plenty of choose-your-own-adventure sequences, which slightly alters gameplay. And run into more accomplished students from the Screen Actors Guild. Our mission is to rescue the civilians. How kind of you. Considering Umbrella caused all this in the first place, those liars! While the core mechanics of the game remained pretty much unaltered, the introduction of the 180 degree quick turn was a much welcomed addition to the franchise, along with quick dodge maneuvers. This definitely improved combat, which still utilized stiff tank controls. Unfortunately, some of the unfavorable elements from the previous two installments bled over into this one as well, such as tedious, inane puzzles. Like this pain in the ass. Give me a break! And again, this one seems to lack the amount of bosses I'd like to see, with the Nemesis hogging most of the spotlight here. Ammo creation was also added to where you can combine different types of gunpowder to create your own ammunition. While you'll never need to resort to constructing your own bullets in easy mode, it does add a new element to item storage utilization. But I'm actually glad that Capcom never brought this back to subsequent entries. Other than some minor annoyances with this one, Nemesis is loads of fun. Not only do you traverse the dead-filled streets of Raccoon City, you also find yourself exploring a number of infested edifices, such as a hospital, and even the police station first encountered in Resident Evil 2. I've always thought that that was a nice little touch. The different shoot-first approach that was taken on Resident Evil 3 versus its predecessors, and the scary-as-hell Nemesis is what stands out for me on this one. I had always wanted to play a Resident Evil game within the city, and the beginning of Resident Evil 2 was just a tease. Nemesis was a dream come true for me, and while the effect it has on me today isn't nearly as impactful as when I had first played it, it nonetheless still sends shivers down my spine and gets that heart rate up when eluding the worst of the worst. So there you go, Resident Evils 2 and 3. So what do I think of the two today? Well, my opinion hasn't changed. I still like Nemesis the best. I like the first one second, but now I have a deep appreciation for Resident Evil 2. It's still third, but it's no longer a distant third. I just feel that Resident Evil 2 is a little too similar to Resident Evil. And when media is similar to each other, whether it is a book, whether it's a movie, whether it's music, I'm always going to like the first one that I had experienced. That's just the way I am. This video game series is no different. So which is your favorite Resident Evil out of the three on the PlayStation? 
If it's Resident Evil 2, what is it about that game that makes it your favorite? Because it seems the majority of people like that one the best, and I understand it now, I get it, but I would still like to hear why you think it's the best one. But I'd also like to hear what you guys think of Resident Evil's 1 and 3. Which are your favorite, why is it your favorite, yada yada, etc, etc. So thanks a lot for checking out this video. I got some more Halloween goodies planned coming up in the next few weeks here. So make sure to stick around for that. But until next time, I'll catch you guys later.